Hello everyone, welcome to Facebook Live on this last day of November. Um, I have some awesome friends with us today. We're gonna to be talking about housing and orientation. So I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. We'll do some news from the nest and then we'll get into some fun questions with our special guests. So I'm Jacinta Luster. I'm the manager of admissions for special populations. And to my left I have. I'm Chris Bruno, director of customer service and operations within housing. And I'm Alex Lyon. I'm the interim director for new student programs here at KSU. Awesome. So we're going to get into some fun questions. I know everyone that is on Facebook Live and those who are not on Facebook Live right now, but maybe later or just even sitting in their room right now thinking, I'm going to get um, housing and orientation and I need to know when it's going to open and all of that. We're going to get into all of those good things. But some news from the nest. So you got to wait for a few minutes. Um, some news from the nest, a few things. Um, our tours are back in person, which is so wonderful. Um, we are going to continue to social distance, so we have limited the amount of students that can actually come on campus tours, but we still want to see your face. We still want to um, present to you. We want you guys to be able to come to our campus, see the great Kennesaw and Marietta campus. So definitely register for a campus tour. You can do that by going to visit.kennesaw.edu. Um, also, if you are interested in some of our special events, maybe you're a transfer student, Student, maybe you're a dual enrollment student, which is my special population. Our transfer team is doing a great job with perspective and new students that are accepted. So definitely sign up for any of those special events. You can also find that on our visit site. So visit.kennesaw.edu and you can go to um, special events. Um, one other thing that I want to talk about and we want to lean in a little bit close is deadlines. So tomorrow we have our spring document deadline that is tomorrow december 1st so if you are a spring applicant you applied by the november 20th application deadline and you're like oh wait i gotta turn in my high school transcript or i have to turn in my college transcript you have until tomorrow to submit those documents to us for you to be reviewed and processed and for you to start um, classes in spring or in January. Um, so make sure you do that by tomorrow, December 1st. For our fall students, students that are coming in as a freshman or a transfer freshman, you've got some deadlines that will be coming up in the next year. So I'm gonna read those off to you to make it easier. If you are an incoming freshman for fall of 2021, which is so crazy that we're in fall of 2021, um, but our deadline for um, admission will be June 1st is your application deadline. And then your document deadline will be June 15th. One thing I wanna remind all of our students, whether you're a freshman or a transfer student or you're a dual enrollment student, you never wanna wait until the actual deadline to apply. You wanna go ahead and start that now. So if you are a freshman, you're thinking about KSU, you wanna get into housing, you wanna get into orientation, you've gotta be accepted. So make sure that if KSU is where you're gonna be for the next four years, go ahead and submit that application now. So that way you can get a decision from us and you can follow those next steps. For our transfer team, um, June 15th is going to be your application deadline for fall and then your document deadline will be June 30th. So you got a little bit of um, some time if you're a transfer student. And then for my student population, which is going to be my dual enrollment population, April 1st is going to be our deadline and then your document deadline is May 14th. Once again, Although you may not be looking for housing and orientation as a dual enrollment student, be mindful that you have to go through um, some additional next steps that's different from a traditional student. So go ahead and start the application now, apply, get all your documents in, so that way we can get you processed and you can move on to those next steps, which is really, really important. The other thing I wanna talk about when it comes to applying for fall of 2021 is for our spring, summer, and fall 2021, we are not requiring the SAT or ACT. We understand that a lot of tests have been canceled um, this year, and we wanna give you the opportunity, if you weren't able to test, to still apply to KSU and still meet some of our emissions emission standards. So if you are a 2.6 GPA, um, we won't require you to take the SAT. For my dual enrollment students, you have to be a 3.0 or higher and have completed um, Algebra 2 um, for you to apply for the dual enrollment program. And all of this information about our admission requirements, um, the SAT, ACT um, requirement will all be found on our admissions website. So if you go to admissions.kennesaw.edu, all of that will be found there based on your student type. So you just can click on those different individual um, student types 
freshmen, transfer freshmen, um, non-trad, audit, dual enrollment, all of that will be found on our website. So those are a few things, some news from the nest. We're getting closer to the end of the year. We're really excited. We're thankful um, for, you know, some time off during the holiday and we're going to gear up for Christmas and other additional holidays. So um, we're really thankful for you guys for taking time to hang out with us and spend with us. So just wanted to put that out. That's my news from the nest. Short, quick, easy. We're going to talk yeah. about housing and orientation. Yeah. So, um, Chris, we'll actually um, start with um, you. Okay. Um, can you tell us when does fall 2021 housing open for our students? Tomorrow is the big day. Like you said, today is the last day of November in 2020. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., Tuesday, December 1st, the application opens. Awesome. And at that time, any incoming first year student can apply for housing. They go to housing.kennesaw.edu uh, and they can apply through the housing portal there. Awesome. All right. And Alex, can you tell us when orientation will open? So first? same thing on December 1st tomorrow. Um, we're not at 10 a.m. So you should theoretically be able to log on at 1201 um, this morning. Um, on December 1st to register for summer and fall orientation sessions. Um, if you are a spring 2021 student, hopefully you have already registered for a session. If you haven't, there's still t um, some time. We have one session happening this Saturday, which is December 5th, and then we have one final session on January 8th. So all of it should be open tomorrow if it's not open art for you already. Awesome. So yeah. um, one thing that I always I'm curious about so what are some of the benefits for and both of you can answer that what are the benefits of going to orientation early and signing up for housing early what are some of those benefits for our students um, thinking of like I can wait or I don't really know where I'm going to go to school yet so I don't want to put in either a deposit or the time to sign up for those things why should they do this now and early sure you want to go first? Sure. So I think it's probably similar. Um, it's the access to um, the dates that are available. So if you are um, accepted and register earlier for orientation, you have more choices for sessions. Um, as our sessions fill up, they will kind of disappear. So as a student, you'll go to orientation.kennesaw.edu. You'll click on sign up. Um, and then the dates will display to you depending on your campus. So if your major is housed on the Kennesaw campus or the Marietta campus, it will show you those. Um, if you don't know which um, campus your major is housed on, no worries, that's on our website as well. Um, but you'll get to see those. The sooner that you do that, um, the more options that you'll have. You also register for your classes during orientation, um, so you'll kind of get a little bit of an advantage if you, not necessarily an advantage, um, but you will be able to maximize your opportunities to select your classes, is how I will say it. Um, you will be able to maybe make your schedule a little bit easier than if you wait till the end of the summer. Not to say that you won't have classes at the end of the summer. We will continue to add sessions. Advisors keep track of that stuff. We'll get you in to the courses that you need to take. Um, but the earlier that you do that, the better kind of access that you have. And then you have the summer to kind of tweak your schedule if you'd like as well. Yeah, that's great. And on the housing side, it's very similar. The housing application is actually a three-part process. So what opens tomorrow is part what we call part one. And that's where students will start their application. They'll sign the license agreement or contract. Uh, if you're an off-campus community, they may use the word lease. Uh, we have a license agreement. And so then you'll pay your $200 non-refundable application initiation fee, and that will get your foot in the door for step one. And then part two opens in mid-March, and that's when you get to pick a preferred roommate. And so we, we have almost four months gap in there so that we can get a large applicant pool and as students enter part two, the roommate selection, uh, they have more people to choose from. And it's important to get your application in early because we do time tickets for parts two and for part three. And students will be issued a time ticket based on the date and the time they sign their license agreement, not when they pay their fee. So don't get that confused. First part is signing the license agreement, then you pay your application initiation fee. We'll issue time tickets in March and April based on the date and time you sign your license agreement. So the earlier you do this, the better your chances are of getting an earlier time ticket to one, pick your roommate, and then eventually pick a room for you and your roommate. And I would say don't get your 
housing time ticket confused with your registration yes. time yes. ticket because I know we can things. use those words interchangeably and it's not the same as when you actually register for your courses obviously yep. when you're at orientation that is when you would register for your classes um, towards the end and you'll have a registration time ticket for that but don't get that confused when you're looking at your yes. Aliexpress and yep looking like well that's not the same as my housing time right. ticket so just yep. know that two there are two different things different. Yeah. and they are different things <laughs> both but important. Um, yeah. yes very both important but just making sure um, that you remember those things so that's awesome um, I just wanted to know a little bit Alex because I don't I haven't actually met you in person I, know. I feel like this I feel like we Corona time. <laughs> we talk all the time <laughs> yeah. on zoom um, uh -huh. but I actually haven't seen you face to face and we are socially distant but right. can you tell us um, why um, just maybe a little bit about yourself and your college experience sure and then kind of tying it back into orientation why you think that your student it's just important for your students to do orientation Absolutely. So um, I'm Alex, as I mentioned. Um, so I actually joined KSU um, in April. So right in the middle of the pandemic, totally weird to be starting a job, but I was so excited to have the job and to get started um, right away with our sessions. We were virtual, which is a strange thing. Um, my background is in student affairs and student leadership. Um, so I graduated from Georgia State University for both undergrad and graduate school. Um, but my um, primarily my professional career has been at small liberal arts colleges um, where I've done student leadership and orientation. Um, so this has always been kind of part of my career. I didn't know that my career existed until I went to college. I didn't know that I could be a professional that hung out with college students and that could be a job, but I love it, it's <laughs> awesome. Um, and students are the reason why I come to work every day and why I love what I do. Um, and that is really what um, drives us in our office to make sure that new students have all of those resources that they need to be successful. So a lot of st times students will think about orientation as I'm going to check a box and to get my classes and then I'm moving on and I don't really have to go. But orientation does more than that. So it's not only teaching you the kind of mechanics of college, so about how to get your talent card to get into your building, which is important, like how to log on to the Wi-Fi, how to know how to do that. Those kind of things are very important as a student. Um, but we're also teaching you about the community and how to be engaged as a student. So a lot of our research tells us that if a student is more engaged up front, they're more likely to stay at the institution, you're more likely to graduate early, um, you're more likely to be happier at, on campus. Um, so we want to give you those tools that you need to be successful in places like your residence hall. And then if you're um, not living with us on campus, no worries. As a commuter student, there are so many different opportunities, but it can be kind of overwhelming, especially at a school like KSU that's pretty big. Um, we want to make sure that you have the things that you need. We'll tie you with student leaders who have kind of walked this path before. Um, so all of those things kind of go into the orientation experience, not just registering for classes, which is a huge part. And I know that's important for everyone. Yes. And you're excited. That's what we're here for. Um, yes. That's why most yeah. people are here. But what I love is teaching students that you can do more um, and opening your opportunities um, to things that you might not have known that you liked. So maybe you're coming into college. I was a huge Grey's Anatomy fan as a high schooler might date me, that's fine. Um, so I I'm thought that I was watching. gonna be a surgeon and live this fabulous <laughs> life in Seattle. And then I figured out that chemistry and I were friends. not friends. Yeah. Um, so that I, now I work at an in college setting and it's awesome. I never knew that was a thing. So if you had asked me as a freshman coming in what I was going to do, that would have looked very different. Um, so we're trying to give students the tools that you need to be successful. Yeah. 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 Thanks for sharing. We've got some questions. So we wanna hop into those and get your answers for those. Okay, all right, so we'll start, we're getting a lot, they're coming in, but I'll start at the bottom and kind of work my body back up because whoever's <laughs> on your housing Facebook and orientation, they're going great, answering questions Ooh, awesome. in the comments, Good. so yeah. yeah. Okay, so does completing um, registration sign us up for new student orientation? So let's clarify, because you have to sign up for orientation to register, so let's talk about that again. Yes, so to sign up for a session, um, you go to orientation.kennesaw.edu and you click on sign up and that will take you to our registration portal um, for orientation. I can use a different term. We'll call it a sign up portal, yes. if that works. Yeah. Um, you'll use your KSU ID and password, just like you log into your email, you'll use the Duo mobile um, system to get in and then it should um, download your available dates and your options depending on um, your student status. So if you're a first year student or a transfer student, you are required to go to orientation. Highly, highly, highly recommended slash required. Um, we can kind of go over what would 
it look like if you didn't attend a session. Um, basically, your registration date would be at the end of the summer, which would not optimize your ideal schedule, if that makes sense. You want to take a um, time to register, to get into a session, to be able to register for classes um, a little bit earlier if you can. Registration for your classes will happen while you're at orientation. So a time ticket will be added um, to your AliExpress account. Often it's not added until when we're closer to that semester where you're starting, um, but you will see that on AliExpress. Um, if there's ever an issue with your time ticket, so let's say that you're registered for this Saturday session and your AliExpress is saying that you're not um, able to register until January, you just let one of our staff know, we can fix that for you. Um, but as long as you're registered for your orientation session, you are good to go to, for registration on the day of your session. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Our next question um, is similar, well, not similar, also orientation. So how many hours do you have to register for to be able to use the HOPE scholarship? So what's the minimum amount Ooh. of hours? Do you know that one? Um, I believe it's, so your freshman year is 30 credits, right? Um, so there's not necessarily a minimum um, or a maximum. Well, there is a maximum. So if you are going to go over, I believe, 18 hours, right-ish? Check me, yeah, we'll look be, on the website. Yeah, we'll check um, if you're, Generally, we, yeah. ask, we advise all of our new students to um, either take 15-ish credits. Um, it depends on what your semester looks like. So if you know that you um, have really difficult classes this first semester, especially if you're a transfer student coming in, you've already got some credit under your belt, it's okay to go a little bit under that 15, um, but just make sure that you're keeping track of where you are. That would mean that you need to pick up another class in the spring semester. So if you do 14 in the fall, you need to do 16 in the spring to make your 30. Um, if you plan to take summer classes, sometimes that can help students kind of stretch it out. If you want to take a lighter um, semester, maybe you're working or you have other obligations, um, it kind of depends on the student. But your academic advisor is really the best person to help you on that. Um, they'll kind of ask you everything from your work schedule to your life schedule um, to make the schedule that works for you. And KSU has, um, in our registration system, there are different features that you can use to actually add in your own work schedule and your, um, like say you're in a sports team or an, ath an athlete on campus, you can put in those training hours and it will help you come up with a schedule that makes sense. So every student's a little bit right. different, kind of depends on where you're at. And I would um, encourage the student, um, if you have questions about um, your HOPE or your Zelle and the hours, definitely reach out to our financial aid office. Um, you can do financialaid.kennesaw.edu. Um, based on your last name in the contacts, you can actually find your financial aid counselor. So they'll tell you that um, about your hours, how much HOPE's going to pay out. All of that will be found. Um, by talking to your financial aid counselor, or if you go into your AliExpress account and you go to um, the financial aid tab there, you can see um, your, fund, um, your funding and all of that in your AliExpress account. Awesome, so should we plug that the FAFSA is open? It is. And yes. the scholarship FAFSA. Yes, the <laughs> FAFSA is open. So if you have not done your um, FAFSA yet, please go ahead and do that now. It's prior, prior, so it would be, oh gosh, 2019? Yes, we're 2019 um, um, taxes. So go ahead and do your um, FAFSA. And then November 1st, we opened up our scholarship application. So it has been officially open for a whole month. Um, so if you haven't gone ahead and completed your scholarship application, if you've been accepted, go ahead and do that now. It takes about 45 minutes or so to do the application. It may take a little bit longer, but what I would say, um, especially now that we're talking about housing and orientation and um, filling things out, make it a day if you have to. So tomorrow or this weekend coming up, I wouldn't wait to this weekend because you know we want to be proactive and getting things done. Um, but take some time, maybe after school tomorrow, you get out, si sit at the computer, sign up for your scholarship, do that, then to do your housing and then do orientation. So yes. just make it, a, make it a plan right before you watch something on Netflix or, you know, five o'clock news, because I'm an old person and I like the five o'clock news. You still write checks. I still write checks. But just take some time and do that. And that way it's done. You don't have to worry about it and you're good to go. Awesome. Okay, they're coming in, so All I right. feel like I'm just like firing Great. out. We got yeah. one for Let's you, go. Chris. Great. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to leave you out. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, all good. Let me let me shift it over to housing a little bit. Okay, so should we go ahead and apply for housing if we applied but have not been accepted yet? 
if you've applied applied to KSU, I'm assuming. Hmm. Okay, so that's the one caveat. In order to be eligible to apply for housing at Kennesaw State, you have to be a fully admitted student. So you would have gotten that email from the admissions and enrollment services team that says, congratulations on your acceptance. Here are your next steps as an admitted student, uh, which includes you know, your net ID, your password. Mm -hmm. Like Alex said, your dual authentication, you gotta get that set up as well. So if you aren't fully admitted yet to KSU, unfortunately you can't apply. And that's one of the benefits. It's like yeah. you; these are your opportunities now. You've been accepted. You've gone through the process, and this is kind of like a reward, a, oddly, a reward or benefit mm -hmm. of being accepted to KSU or any school is that you now get to sign up for housing. You get to sign up for orientation. So that's why we encourage early in um, applying to the university so that you get the benefit of signing up for housing exactly. early. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I have another housing question, okay. um, but it's about current students. Okay. When does the application for continuing students for next fall open? Awesome. Great question. Uh, the upper class student application opens January 6th at 10 a.m. So that's the six days into the new year. It is a Tuesday, I believe, or a Wednesday, one of those days. January 6th, 2021 at 10 a.m. That's when your application would become uh, eligible for you. Awesome. Okay, back over to you, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do honors students have a different orientation they need to sign up for? Kind of. Okay, so our honors program, if you are admitted into the honors program, um, you will receive communication directly from them. Um, and we're still kind of working out what this looks like for the fall semester. Um, but you will have a separate honors advisor. And then there are different aspects of the program that we want to make sure that you're aware of, whether it's where you can live on campus, um, different programs that you can be part of, and then um, what to sign up for. Uh, but you will attend a session just like everyone else. So you can go ahead and register for um, a session and then you should receive more information very shortly from the honors program. Awesome, okay, another orientation question. Mm -hmm. By signing up for orientation, does that officially confirm their decision to attend KSU? Not necessarily. So you, um, some students do decide um, later, maybe you get a different scholarship at a different institution. Maybe it's just not the right time to go to an institution right now. We totally understand that. Um, if you choose to no longer want to attend KSU, we do ask that you reach out to our admissions office and let us know. Um, but it's not necessarily locking you in. Um, but just be mindful that if you're thinking about going to another campus, if you do go to orientation, you register for courses, you're holding a spot that another student then will not have. Um, so just make sure that you're canceling properly if you choose to do that. Good point. Yeah. And okay. that's same on the housing side. Mm -hmm. if, if it's May and you've picked a room for fall and you make the decision, I'm not going to go this year, yep. don't assume that we know that because you've told admissions. You have right, to yeah. cancel your housing separately. That's really important if mm -hmm. you're holding a spot that someone else might be able to use. Yep. And for our students, know that we are a non-binding admissions. Um, so you're not having to commit to us. And if you decide that you no longer for whatever reason, whether you just aren't able to attend that semester, it's non-binding. So there's no deposit that you're having to put down for admission to the institution, but just know there are deposits when it comes to housing and orientation. So just be mindful of that monetary component. Yep. Awesome, all right, this question is for Chris. Okay. Um, they applied to honors and got in. However, they yeah. saw it was an LLV. An LLV, yeah. Yeah, so they wanna know, if they don't apply to the honors LLV, are they allowed to be housed or do I just, do they have to live in the LLV? I guess is the best way to say okay. it. Okay, I'll try to summarize. I'm an honor student. Do I have to live in the living learning village? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. If, if you're an honor student, you can live anywhere you want. Um, if you choose to live in the LLV, the living learning village, as we call them, uh, you can apply for that as well through the housing application, which opens tomorrow at 10 a.m. <laughs> Very excited for it to be open. Um, yeah, you can you can apply for any LLV within the housing application, but you don't have to live there if you're an honor student. Definitely recommend it because the honors program is intense and you'll be living with other first year housing students who are going through similar classes and have the, sim the same experience. Um, I was not an honor student, so I don't know what that's like. So kudos for being <laughs> really smart. Um, but yeah. yeah. Awesome, okay, perfect. Next question. If my freshman has been accepted into housing for spring 2021, when is move-in day? Move-in day for you is Friday, January 8th, 2021. And you will have to pick a move-in arrival time. We'll be sending out uh, communication within the next seven days about that process. And then December 14th, you can go in and start picking what time you'll arrive on January 8th. 
I'm going to summarize this one. It says follow-up question to the honors okay. one. Um, basically, is there a price difference depending on what class you are? Upperclassmen versus first year, or is housing all priced the same? And does it depend on your class, I guess? Oh, I see. So uh, the housing, all the rates are different. And we do not have um, published rates for 21-22. They have to go downtown to the Board of Regents this long approval process. But you can look at our website right now and see what the different rates are. And it really depends on the type of housing you live in. Um, you know, if you're, the Honors LLV is in our Austin Residence Complex and we have four bedroom, four bath and two bedroom, two bath. Those cost a certain rate. And then in tr more traditional first year housing, we have prices ranging from 3,100 per semester to $5,000 per semester. Doesn't really matter what class you are. It just matters of which housing you pick during room selection in April. Um, another housing question, are out-of-state freshmen guaranteed fall 2021 housing? No one is guaranteed fall 2021 <laughs> housing. So that's why it's important to apply early and get your application in there, especially if you're out of state. Um, if you're coming from somewhere that's not in the state of Georgia, definitely recommend you apply within the first week. I will say we get a lot of questions about how quickly does housing fill up? How quickly do I need to get my application in? There are students who applied all the way through May last year who ended up getting housing. So don't feel like you have to get your application in by 1030 tomorrow or you're not going to get housing. I promise you, take your time. There's going to be housing available for you and we will do anything we can to help you out. We've actually gotten calls from students who, because we open during the school day, mm -hmm. they will call us like from the bathroom in their high school. Of, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm having trouble with this application part. Please don't skip school. Yeah, don't do that. Don't <laughs> skip class. It's not worth it. Yeah. No. You you will get housing, but Go to your AP bio and then yeah. at, right. at lunch. Right. Right. Then yeah. you can call. <laughs> Just like Jacinta, Jacinta said, wait till after school. There's yeah. plenty of time. I promise. Yeah. A hushed call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So I'm gonna assume this question is talking about fall, but well, I don't want to confuse you, Alex. Yes, go Okay, for it. <laughs> so they're trying to sign up for orientation right now, but it's saying no sessions are available. So we yeah. know we have two mm -hmm. left for spring, and let's yes. reiterate when the fall application will open. Cool. Yes. So spring 2021 orientation is happening now. Yay. Yeah. Um, like, you're in it. It's Ooh. awesome. So um, we have a Saturday session, which is December 5th, and then one more session on January 8th. So if you are admitted for spring 2021, so you're starting next semester, um, you can go ahead and register for a session. Um, if you are coming in summer or fall 2021, those dates will be available um, after midnight tonight. So you can, if you would like to, if you're finishing your Cyber Monday and it rolls <laughs> into Tuesday, you can go ahead and register for your sessions. Yeah. Um, just like Chris was saying, don't feel panicked. Um, our sessions are about 500 students-ish each. Um, so we do have a lot of capacity. Um, we will fill up throughout the summer, I will say that. Um, but don't be in a panic, like you can always do your housing application first and then register for orientation. I promise you will have a lot of selections. Um, when you start seeing dates kind of disappear or fill up, that's more towards middle of next semester towards the end of the summer um, or going into the summer. That's when we start to see dates kind of disappear from the calendar. So I just wanna reiterate, starting tomorrow they will open, um, but don't feel like you have to rush right this minute to. Turn it on. Like you don't have to set your alarm for twelve ten this morning and get up. I promise. <laughs> or you might Enjoy be up anyway, sleep. so go ahead. But yeah, love it. Okay, mm -hmm. um, this one's more. We'll throw it to Jacinta. All right, get you I'm back ready. in the mix, girl. Right. Okay. So they want to apply for an on-campus job for fall twenty twenty one. How yes. would they do that? You can actually do that through um, Handshake, which is um, where our students can go and apply for on-campus jobs. Um, obviously, Handshake also has office off-campus jobs for internships and things like that. But if you're looking for jobs here on campus, whether you want to work um, as a student assistant in the admissions office or on campus somewhere, you would do that through Handshake. Awesome. Okay, so let's reiterate, KSU is a non-binding school. Yes. So how do you let KSU know you're coming and are housing and orientation involved in that process? So I would say it's really you're, you're showing up for the first day, but really signing up for housing and orientations, kind of you saying like, this is the school for me, but if really you showing up day one, for class, that's you saying I'm here at KSU for the fall semester or spring semester when you show up that first day. But you'll continue to receive communication yeah. until you either register for classes or tell us that you're no longer coming. Yes. So unless you really like emails, 
let us know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would say more mm -hmm. so you need to let housing yep. and yeah. orientation know, not, not necessarily admissions. admissions. Yeah. So, right. yeah, just reiterating that. We're getting a lot of questions about that. Um, okay. I do have a question. Yeah, you, you go ahead. Like, you go ahead so, while I find the next um, one. For Chris, living learning communities, because I know you talked about somebody throughout LLV, um, and not a lot of people know exactly what that is, but could you talk about um, living learning communities or living learning villages and what that looks like for a student, um, kind of the differentiation between that, or is there a difference for a student when it comes to living learning communities? Sure, yeah, we actually rebranded just this year, Christina, if you're watching, uh, LLCs is what we used to call them, now they're living learning villages because it takes a village to raise students. And so we have probably 13 to 15 LLVs that students are eligible for. They range from outdoor adventure, engineering, first generation college students, um, international students, um, honors. Uh, there's a lot of different options for you. Some are based, um, tied to academics, and some are just pure interest. So we actually have a whole community on the Merida campus that's dedicated to gaming. And these are students who are either majoring in a major that's related to computer game design or they just really like to play video games. <laughs> and so there's a whole application within the application for those LLVs. And it's really an opportunity for students who have similar academic interest or just personal interest to live together. Um, Alex was talking about the research, and we, we found that students who live amongst students with similar experiences, they do better academically, they're more connected to the university, they graduate faster. So we try to build these little villages within our housing areas to give students the opportunity to connect with similar um, interests or people, and it helps them make friends a lot faster. Yeah. It's really neat. That's really good. It's good to have those like-minded people even though you may not you don't have to live in those right. if you don't it's want optional. to it's optional but i think like you said having people with similar ideas as you when it comes to you know helping you out with your major because if i was a computer science major i would want all the help that i could get yes. for my um, classmates exactly. and you know the people that i live around so i would definitely you know if you can or if that's something that interests you then definitely look at an llv um, as an option for you. Um, is there specific areas that LLVs live in or is it across the board in our different housing facilities or? We try to sprinkle them all over because mm -hmm. the different areas have different price points. So we try to give students the option to have the LLV experience, you know, depending on their financial situation, they, they can have that if they, if they choose. So they are all over. On the Marietta campus, they're in Hornet Village and University Columns, which are the houses. In Kennesaw, they're in ARC, our Austin Residence Complex, University Village Suites, and University Village. So they're just kind of sprinkled all throughout. On our housing website, it will list what the community is, where it's located, which is also in the housing portal, which will open tomorrow. And in the same vein, can you tell us a little bit about the different housing options that we have for students here at Kennesaw, whether they live on the Kennesaw campus or the Marietta campus? We have everything. We, our housing has been described as luxurious. It is luxurious. Uh, it, the, the, our students here, frankly, are very spoiled. Yes. <laughs> They're uh, better than me. But when I went to college, it was two people to a bedroom, community bathrooms and showers on the floor, and that was pretty much it for first year students. Um, here at uh, Kennesaw State, we have apartment style, um, which is you get your own private bedroom and bathroom, and then you share a, a living area and a full-size kitchen with the other people in your apartment. We have suite style, which is where you still get a private bedroom, um, but you share a bathroom and a shower and a, a little common area with one or two or three other people. Um, we do have a traditional building, Howell Hall on the Marietta campus is under a complete renovation right now. When it opens in August, it's gonna look and feel completely different. I'm really excited about I, to I've, see Howell I've Hall. I've been able to get in there twice to see how it's looking and it's looking great. Okay. So if, if you're a parent of a student uh, who might be coming to Kennesaw and you say, well, I lived in a, a community style. I want my student to have that experience. We do have that option in Marietta. That's the only campus that we have that on. And then we actually have um, houses, old fraternity and sorority houses on the Marietta campus, which is now our gaming community. We have 10 houses. Each house houses 12 students. And it's like the real world. I mean, there's a whole house together. <laughs> Do they know what the I, I don't know if <laughs> students know. I don't know if they We're know talking the about world. Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> the Sorry. real world. Yeah. <laughs> I went to college in the 90s, folks. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
so yeah, we have everything a student could want. Um, we have one bedroom, one bath suites that if the, you don't want to live with roommates, that's the one that's $5,000 a semester. It's a little bit pricey, um, but if you really want to live alone, we have those options. Mm -hmm. Check out our website. We have everything on there. Um, Catherine and Tiffany and our marketing team, they have these virtual 3D tours where you can click in a floor plan and then move around like you're, they have for real estate and homes. It's really incredible. I like it. Yeah. All right. I like it. Got more questions. All right. We're ready for <laughs> questions. Okay. So a couple people have asked what the fee is associated with orientation. So it depends on your semester. Um, so for spring and summer, it is $40 for the student and $20 for parents and guests and family. Um, we are virtual only for the spring and summer, which is for someone who does this for a living, a little bit weird, but we have made it as awesome as we can. Yeah. Um, so we're, instead of, like you might think of a virtual experience as just being lectured at, you actually are going to be broke up, broken up into a small group, you get to meet with an orientation leader, you get to meet with your advising group, um, so you will get to do all of those things just like you traditionally would, you just won't be actually physically on campus. Um, so again, that's for spring and summer, for $40 per student, and then $20 per parents. Um, if your parents want to join you, Wonderful, even family members or guests, we encourage you um, to invite them. They have a separate virtual orientation experience. Um, if your parents or family live in one household, we recommend that you only register one of them because um, they'll all get the same link. So we don't want you to spend money on multiple links if you're sitting on two computers next to each other. We want to make sure that you're kind of optimizing your, <laughs> your fees yeah. there. Um, so that is our spring and our summer. For fall, we are having a virtual and in-person hybrid experience. Yay. Um, so your actual orientation session where you're meeting with your advising team and with your OLs, all of that will still be virtual via Zoom. Um, so like I said, you'll meet with your small groups, you'll go with your um, advising team, you'll get to know them more. Um, and then we are working to provide an on-campus, in-person, um, new OWL welcome event that will be for you guys. Um, we're working on that schedule because we really want to see how this pandemic plays out on how many we need to have, like how social distance we need to be. We want to make sure that everyone is comfortable. Um, so we will have the in-person option um, available to you guys by April 1st. It will be on our website. You can go ahead and register for those sessions where you're registering for classes. That's the virtual session. That's what's opening tomorrow. Um, and those sessions, because we're doing a hybrid model, it's $60 per student and $20 per um, parents. So we're keeping the parent the same, um, but increasing the student just a little bit so we can bring you guys on campus, hopefully. Perfect. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Um, can you talk a little bit about our the transfer side? I mm -hmm. was a transfer sure. student um, to KSU many moons ago. Uh -huh. um, and so I loved being able to go to um, orientation because I was transfer from a community college, so obviously things look very different for me. And just getting to come to campus and meet students who were also a part of the transfer process. Can you talk about that for our yeah. um, transfer population? So our transfer students often tell us, I don't have to go to orientation, I already went. Mm -hmm. Which I get that. You already went to one, it was a long day, you are probably hot, I understand. <laughs> However, KSU is a little bit different, our community is different. Um, our advising structure is different. We want to make sure that you also are optimizing your ability to register for courses. Um, so this year, our first transfer specific session um, will be in about mid-June, and that will hopefully allow you guys to get those classes that you need to be successful. Um, and then along with our transfer students, so even if you're transferring from a USG school, so let's say that you went I don't know. I went like to Dalton Georgia State. Highlands. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Or <laughs> I went to Georgia State. Um, so when I look at Owl Life, it's similar to what I remember seeing in undergrad, but it's a little bit different. It's specific to KSU. So we want to make sure that you, even though you might have gone to even a USG school, you're still coming to orientation to get connected to this community, learning these features. Um, and often our transfer students will tell us if they didn't attend orientation, they don't feel as connected. So they're having trouble meeting people, they're having trouble getting involved. Um, our transfer students tend to be our commuter students or even our non-traditional students, which is a strange term, but that's anyone who's over 22, basically. Yes. Um, so if you're coming back to school, you took a few years off, it can be hard and intimidating when you're walking around and all you see are like 18 year olds. We wanna make sure that you have um, the space for you as well. So we're connecting you to um, orientation leaders who might be transfer students, people on our team. We have a staff member whose um, job is dedicated to making sure that our transfer students feel connected. Um, so all of that kind of helps join that community and not feel like you got it, but then you get 
into the summer and you're like, wait a minute, I don't got it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of helps to go through it. I think Mm -hmm. like, like I said, I would transfer it in and it's still for me, even though I grew up in the area and I knew about Kennesaw, that doesn't mean that you always know the ins and outs. And it was just nice to be able to come in, learn about the university itself and register for classes. Uh, You know, we all know that's an important thing, but still being able to have that community and learn more about the institution yeah. so and learning about like your classes and what might be transferring in and why it might not be yeah. um, or if you have a scholarship or you're kind of wondering where you are and your hope status all that stuff is important to go through um, just like any kind of incoming student so we want to make sure that you're doing that and those to do's like the things that you're like yeah. oh wait I need to talk to financial right aid. Like, or I need to like park my car things. while I go to class yes. those kind of things are important so <laughs> yeah. and the transfer orientation yep yes <laughs> Awesome. Okay. So Chris, this is for you. Um, essentially the LLVs, are those all four by fours, all two by twos, or is there a mixture? It's all different types. We have two bedroom, one bath suites. We have one bedroom, one bath suites, four bedroom, three bedroom, two bedroom, anything you could want. We have an LLV in almost every single floor plan that we offer. You get a room and you, you get, get a room, room. and like you get a room. It's like the Waffle House breakfast combo. You get yeah. And if you, you apply for an LLV yeah. and you aren't selected, you can still live in housing on campus at Kennesaw State. It's not like <laughs> that's your only chance to get housing. Um, it, it, some students don't get into the LLV of their choice and they still get to live on campus elsewhere. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So you touched on this a little bit earlier, Chris, roommate selection. How does that work if they just absolutely don't know anyone on campus? How do they go about finding roommates? This is my this is my favorite thing. I went to college in South Carolina, didn't know anybody. I'm a Georgia kid, so I didn't know anybody going to the college I went to. And it was the best experience for me because, you know, frankly, we see students who are like best friends in high school. Maybe there's two or a pair of four and they want to live together. They have to live together and they end up hating each other by the end of the year. And they just, it's like oil and water. So good for you. If you don't know anybody, that's fantastic. Um, And step one, I do wanna take this time to plug this little step-by-step guide for the housing (laughs) application. This is available on our website now. Um, One of the most important sections that you'll fill out is right here, the My Profile section. This is where you're gonna answer a few questions about yourself what temperature you like to keep your room, how do you study with music, without music, are you meat, clean, neat, meat? Are meat? you meat, clean, or nessie? Uh, <laughs> do you only eat meats? Do you right. only eat meats? Do you not eat meats? Uh, do you smoke or vape? Some really critical questions in our, our experience of things you should know about the person you're gonna live with. And when we get to roommate selection, which opens in late March, um, you will be able to see uh, different students who meet your classification. If you're a first year um, female student, you'll see other first year female students, for example. And you can literally click through people's profiles and it will give you a percentage match based on the answers to, the, to those my profile questions. And you'll be able to click on each person's profile and see how they answered it. Um, you can opt to share your social media handles like Instagram or Snapchat. So you can do a little light stalking if you'd like on your potential roommates. And then you can message with them ahead of time to see if you're a good fit. Um, there's, there's great resources in there. If you don't know anybody, we will help you find someone. It's all at your fingertips and we'll spit out recommended roommates and all that good stuff. And I was gonna say maybe at orientation, mm-hmm. that's a good time to like meet with yes. your, if you don't yeah. know your roommate yet, you haven't really done any light stalking right. yeah. on their <laughs> Instagram or Facebook. You can meet them at orientation, maybe make it a family thing where like your mom and dad meet them or like whomever is coming with you and maybe you guys go to Waffle House, which is down the road right after, the you know, Move. get a coffee or maybe yep. make before breakfast and then, you know, get to meet your, your roommates that way. Yeah. yeah. And then you kind of figure out, you know, who's bringing what. Yes. So you don't end exactly. up with, like, in my residence hall, we all brought a toaster. So we had four toasters. <laughs> so. Probably <laughs> never used them. Never no. used them. Brand new. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to assume this person's student is a current student because the way the, the question's phrased, if a student has housing already, do they need to reapply? Yes, most definitely. So if you're a current resident of ours, um, depending on your classification, if your student is a current first year student, um, they can't live in first year housing next year. They have to move to upper class housing, which they have to apply for, which again opens on January 6th at 10 a.m. for our returning students. 
Um, if you're an upper class student and you live in an upper class community currently, you're going to get the option to what we call renew your room, which is I live in this room now. I want to live in this room again next year. It's a few simple clicks of a button and boom, you're done with the whole process in January. And then any room that aren't, isn't selected during that period of time, we open up to what we call our rising upper class students or so current first year students living on campus. Awesome. Okay. Um, scholarships. How would a student go about getting a scholarship that they could pay? How do they pay for housing? Do scholarships mm -hmm. cover housing financial aid? Let's just touch on that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So your housing is going to get billed to your student account in Owl Express where you pay your tuition fees, meal plan, and then your housing as well get, get paid through there. Any financial aid you get, scholarships or otherwise, can go to apply towards whatever you, money you owe Kennesaw State. If we do have an option to have a payment plan, um, any Bursar staff that might be watching this will probably kill me for saying this, but <laughs> there is an option to uh, stretch out the remainder of your balance because it's most always housing that you owe and stretch it out over two or three or four payments so that you don't have to pay it all up front. Awesome. Um, that looks like it's it for questions right now. Awesome. All right, so I have a few other questions. Um, or orientation. Um, can you talk about how we involve our current students in new student orientation? Um, talking about our leaders there and then also for um, housing to uh, leadership um, student involvement in that way. Yeah, absolutely. So we just um, finished our OL interview process for the 2021 P team. Um, so we are looking to hire roughly 35 to 40 student leaders um, who work with us for the calendar year. So they go from January to December um, and they are upperclassmen students, but you can be a sophomore, um, a rising sophomore, all the way to um, a senior and join our team. Um, but these students are phenomenal. We try to find um, students from different majors, different backgrounds, different um, campuses, so that they are really well-versed in campus life here. Um, and then we do a training program with them so that they're all ready to answer your questions, show you around campus, make sure that they're um, connecting you to the community. And what I love about our student leaders, um, we have a phenomenal team this year and we are excited to have another phenomenal team next year, um, but they just have such a kind of hold on the pulse of campus. So when like the pandemic happened, our students were able to answer questions with our incoming students in ways that staff might not be able to answer as well. So like, what is it really like in the residence hall? We had people who lived on campus to answer those kind of questions. What's it like to shift from in-person to virtual? They were able to talk about that pivot and they're like new at home workspace and being 21 living with your mom again and you never thought that would happen because she thought you were living with your fraternity brothers. Like that's a thing that happened so that <laughs> yeah. it's able, you're able to talk to other students um, and give them a different kind of perspective. Because um, staff, we can give you a lot of information about KSU and are certainly resources, but our students are just more plugged in. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting how students have just different interests. So we have one student who's really into athletics. He will tell you to go to every single sporting event that you can because that's his thing. And then we have someone who's like, no, I hate that you should go and get involved in this way on campus. Um, you should look for free food anytime that you can. Here's where you can find it. Like we have just all different students to get to know. And it helps connect you on campus and kind of find your place in the community. Because it can be kind of, as I mentioned, KSU can be a big place, but we do have that kind of small community feel and that's how you kind of start finding it. That's awesome. On the housing side, we have what we call RAs, resident assistants who live uh, in, the, on, in the buildings, on the floors among students. We have about 140, 150 of them across both campuses, and they go through a really rigorous selection process, and then they go through uh, almost three full weeks of training in the summertime. We bring them back at the um, mid-July, late July, and we go through a, a different training with them, conflict resolution, resources here at Kennesaw State, so that they can actually be a resource the movies tend to paint RAs as not cool people, you know, people that are gonna, they're gonna make sure they enforce the rules and you might get in trouble. Um, they, they do that for the department and for the university as a whole, but they're way more than that. They're, they're there to help you get plugged in. Like Alex said, I think that's a great word. Um, and RAs are the lifeblood of our department because they're the ones that are most connected to the students who live with us and are there 24 seven, 365 days a year they serve in an emergency on-call capacity. So if something happens after 5 p.m. and you need help, you call your RA and they're gonna be able to either tell you the answer or they'll find the answer for you. So 
That's like Noah from Felicity. It is. <laughs> Another Listen, old TV I'm just reference. I'm going to keep bringing <laughs> yeah. back all TV references. So, <laughs> Noah and Felicity. I mean, you if can Doc Martens are back, then Felicity has to come exactly. back. That's just so, like how it's it's perfect. perfect. Yeah. We're so relevant right now. You know? Yeah. So, um, when it comes to orientation, obviously, we've got it's student focused, but can we talk a little bit about how we involve our parents and um, what is parent orientation? What does that look like? Is it required? All of those good things. Yeah, so we have parent and family orientation because we know that sometimes it's your parent who wants to come with you. Sometimes it might be another family member um, or even a very close friend or a friend's parent who wants to hang out with you. So um, these sessions run in tandem. They start a little bit later than the student session. Um, so students, you can expect to log on around 8.30 in the morning. I know that sounds early. It's really not. We're trying to prep you for <laughs> your future. Um, and then your sessions start around 9. Parent orientation starts around 10, and it goes for about two hours. Um, you'll hear from all different campus partners about um, how to get connected to KSU, because if you're a parent or a family member, we want you to be involved just like we want your student to be involved. Um, and we talk about research. So research tells us that if your parents and your family are connected as well to the institution, your student's going to thrive. Um, we want to make sure that we're connecting you to our parent and family association um, and parent and family programs. We have a great resource there for um, parents and family to keep you connected on what's going on. Um, so that's where you'll meet them. It's not required that you attend, but we do recommend, especially if this is your first student going through college um, or even going through a USG school, um, we do recommend that you tag along with your student to get to know all the services that we have um, because a lot of the services that the students will hear from, you will also hear from on the parent side. So you'll hear from like financial aid, how your students being safe with campus um, police, um, career development, um, career planning and development. So if your students kind of in between what they want to do, what resources we have, and then you can kind of help us plug those things throughout the year uh, to get you kind of familiar with the community. Another question that I have about orientation is, um, can you tell us the difference between Orientation yeah. and Al Expedition. Yes, okay, yeah. so orientation um, is new student orientation, um, and that is your one session time uh, where you will register for that. You will go to like meet your OL, you'll meet with your academic advising team, you'll register for your classes, and then we also are um, offering an extended orientation experience. Um, it's almost like a student team building retreat, um, honestly, where we are going to an offsite camp, um, we'll do team building activities. You'll get to know other students. Um, that registration we are hoping to open in the spring. Um, and then that occurs the week before classes start. So you will move in early to campus, um, get your stuff into your room, and then you will come with us on your retreat to get to know students a little bit better. Um, so it's kind of an extended option, um, but it, that's not required. So our orientation, our virtual sessions, those are the required piece and then that would be an optional experience if you'd like to join us. Um, is, do you guys stay in Georgia or do you go out yeah. of state or is it like just really close by? This year we're um, hoping to go to a facility in Port Valley, Georgia, which is just outside of Macon. Yep. Um, so we wanted to be a little farther away so that your mom and dad can't come get you if you think it's lame. <laughs> um, but you're still um, in Georgia hanging out. Um, we don't want to take you all the way because that I feel like being on a bus, that's not very fun. So no. we want to make sure that we're kind of optimizing our time that we have with you. Yeah, that's really fun. I will. I wish I could like go back and yeah. like I wish Al Expedition was like something that we had. And it's when like props courses, college. swimming, um, big games, like a movie night, all sorts of stuff. And it's a great way if you don't really know anybody going into KSU. It's a great way to get connected um, and to get to know people. Kind of helps jumpstart that semester, getting to know one another. So full circle, get to know people. Yes, that's very important. Helps we really want that connection. Is really like we're really plugging yeah. it. Yeah, uh, for Chris. My question for you, this is going to be more of like a little Debbie Downer question. Cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. Great. Womp, womp. <laughs> womp, womp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can you talk about housing and the housing wait list? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> As I hang my head. No, no, no that's <laughs> great. Yeah. So every year, I've been at KSU for nine years now, and we hit what we call a wait list every year. Uh, where in usually around mid-May to early June, we run out of rooms for students. The you know, Kennesaw State as an institution is just over 39,000 enrolled, is that right? About 40, yeah, 40. Okay, close up. to 40,000 yeah. students. <laughs> we have 5,400 beds available between both campuses. 
So that's not a number that we hide. It's, it's just everybody needs to know that 5,400 beds is what we have for students. And we run out of rooms. Uh, when we get into room selection in April time, the rooms will go quickly and we'll, we'll watch them fill up and then eventually we hit what we call a wait list. And that is, hey, students, sorry, we don't have any rooms for you. You can add yourself to this, this list. We will call you if we have a room that comes available due to a cancellation. If a student decides they're not coming to Kennesaw anymore, that's how those rooms open up over the summertime when students cancel their housing. Um, don't, don't fret, we're not gonna hit that number. <laughs> like I said, students who applied all the way through early May last year were able to pick housing in April. So please don't freak out when the application opens. Uh, take your time with it. That my profile section is really important. But over the years, every year we place anywhere from 500 to upwards of like this year, I think we placed 1200 students off the wait list and it's slow. It's called a wait list for a reason. So you'll, you might put your name on there in early June. You may not hear something until mid July, early August. And this year we placed people all the way up until two days before move in. We were offering rooms to people um, and trying to get them uh, you know, off the wait list for the parent that asked the question, move in for spring is January 8th. We've placed almost 400 people off the wait list for this spring. So we do whatever we can to get students housing on campus at Kennesaw because we believe it's so important. So don't fret. Yeah. Once again, I know it, it seems like we're like alarming, or at least yeah. me. Maybe it's just me. I'm the one that's like, you've got to do everything early right. and if you yeah. don't. But <laughs> like, yeah. just know that we will we will try our best and always be prepared and ready for, you know, if you can't live on campus, it's not like you can't live on campus the next year or the year right. after that. So just be mindful of those things um, when you're looking at that. My last question for Alex is um, when it comes to advising, are students required to meet with their advisor before orientation or is that something that they should do or just wait until orientation? Yeah, so before your session, about two weeks before, we'll give you um, some pre-orientation items to complete on a checklist. One of those things is pre-advising. Um, so you will go, you can actually access it now at advising.kennesaw.edu. You can see kind of how the process works. We ask that you wait until your session time to actually get advised because you want to make sure that all those transcripts, um, everything that needs to come in from your high school or your former campus is in with us before you meet with your advising team. Um, but you can meet with them. It's highly encouraged. If you don't have the opportunity to meet with them, um, no worries. We'll make sure that you get a schedule and you will uh, meet with your advisor. You'll just do that the day of. So basically how it works is you will attend your session in the morning and then in the afternoon we have um, what we call online modules that have a lot of different resources, kind of like a um, different portal that you can go through looking at different things, um, various parts of campus that we don't, if we talked about them, I promise you guys probably fall asleep during orientation so we want to keep it light and happy Fun. and then you guys can access those as you need them. Um, so you're working on those and then you also have time to meet with your advising team. Um, so they are available to you all afternoon so you can reach out to them. Say you're trying to register for a course, you keep getting an error message, they will be there. Um, so even though you're not in person, they are there um, virtually to support you and that's where you could meet with an advisor. Um, I do recommend that everyone meets early. It just helps the advising team kind of get ready. It also helps us know how many classes to kind of reserve and have if we know that we have one type of major and everyone needs this one foundational class. We know that we might need to be thinking about like adding more courses to that um, so that more people can be accommodated. Um, so that just sort of helps us track, so. We've got one more question before we go out. Okay, all right, so um, Chris, you mentioned this earlier, but let's reiterate. So you're signing up for housing tomorrow. When are you gonna choose the dorm location and what type of room? When does that come? That doesn't, hold on, I have my dates here. I didn't want to screw it up. <laughs> Room selection opens Monday, April 19th, 2021. So you got a long time to think about what type of housing you want and where you want to live and more importantly, what you can afford. Uh, that's a, another important factor, not to be a Debbie Downer again, but. Yep. Um, Sorry, Chris. Yeah, Just no, it's fine. So April 19th, uh, those dates should be up on our housing website. Again, this little handy step-by-step -step guide is a great resource for you to get started for tomorrow. Check the website for more information, but um, April 19th is when you'll pick your room. Before we go, can you guys give just a little bit of advice? We always ask um, from our guests, what advice would you give a incoming freshman for, or even a transfer student coming into KSU? What advice would you give them? Wow, unscripted question. 
uh, I think my advice would be two-pronged. One, soak it in. You only get one first year of college. Um, my first year of college was the most fun I've ever had. Didn't perform the best academically, got a solid 1.8 at the end of my freshman year, but darn if I didn't have a lot of fun. Um, made a lot of stories, made a lot of friends, and uh, soak it in. And then two, use this time to really start to establish independence from your parents. Um, parents, sorry to be a Debbie Downer again, uh, <laughs> but you know, take your time to do the orientation application on your own. Same with the housing application. This is your time to really start spreading your wings <laughs> and, um, you know, leaving the nest. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of pressure, or I felt a lot of pressure going to college that I needed to have very specific college experiences. It's almost mm -hmm. like when you wake up on Christmas and you know it's Christmas and you, you're like, <laughs> or even Thanksgiving just happened, like you need to really enjoy your turkey because you're not going to have it for a year. What kind of anxiety and pressure does that bring? I felt that very much about the traditions of my campus. Um, and I felt like I had to get involved in everything. And then I got a little bit overwhelmed because I kind of stretched myself too thin. So while we want you to get connected and have experiences, it's okay to not want to do everything. So if you um, find one group or one club or one organization that you're really passionate about, you can follow that through. So whether that's being an OL, an RA, joining SGA, joining Greek Life, um, or just getting involved in a club and being very involved in that, um, you can see that through and have really amazing experiences that might not be like your traditional college experience. So just kind of go with your path, see what works for you, and don't feel like you have to like fit into every single mold. Um, Cause I know when I was leaving high school, I'm like, bye y'all, I'm new Alex. This is like, yeah. <laughs> welcome. And it, it, no, you're still you. Um, so just finding how you fit in this new place. Um, and asking questions, this is a shameless plug for our office. If you have any questions, we get this a lot where students are like, I'm so sorry to bother you. You're not bothering me. This is literally my job. So please ask me if you have any question or ask our office. It's KSU orientation at kennesaw.edu. You can email us at any time. Uh, we will get back to you. If you try to log on and like your dates aren't showing correctly, um, or if you're just having an error, or if you just have a general question about campus, we can usually point you in the right direction. There are no stupid questions, honestly, because going to college, there are a lot of different moving parts. You're also going to college in a pandemic, so you get double kudos for trying to navigate this process. Yeah. Normally, you could like walk into someone's office. That's not always an option now. Um, so just lean into it. It's going to be fine, and let people help you. So don't feel like you have to do it all yourself either. And Chris, where can people reach housing? Uh, so ksuhousing.kennesaw.edu is our website, and we're housing KSU on all social media. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I think yeah, this has been a you. great Facebook Live for Housing and Orientation. We always sign off with a big hooty hoo. So, guys, thank you once again for um, spending time with us on Facebook Live. And hooty hoo. Hooty hoo. Hooty -hoo. Hooty -hoo.